I just remember, you know, I watched, you know, you know, this is the theme, the gay every show. I watched yeah. this first one. I watched everything. I used to watch his Tonight Show sets. I just always just thought the guy, he just always, it was funny. when Even like when I was in ju- junior high, I was like in seventh grade, I knew that his stuff was just funnier. Yeah. That it was, this is like a different level. Like this guy is better than all of these other guys. And I was wondering, like, what was that like, you know? Because I, I really, I sent an email about that. Like, I thought the Gary Shandling documentary that you did was, the, the, that's my favorite thing you've done. And I have Thank a 40 year old virgin and all this stuff. But um, what was that like? Because you were friends with somebody sure. like that. Um, you know, myself, I've lost a couple of friends, and I know that certain things, it just gets like really emotional. What was it? But I never delved into there life to the level that, that you did with, with Gary, who was like a friend and a mentor to you. Like, what was that process like? Like, how long did it take you to, to, to you know, because that was on par with like, did you see that Eagles documentary? Oh, I love that Eagles It was like three hours long and it felt like it was 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. And it's just like, I, I got through like a cross country flight watching that. And I felt like the Gary Shanley doc was like that. What was that like? It was like the Eagles doc if, if Gary uh, wasn't on coke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's funny because now that it's over and I've been, uh, you know, I finished it uh, uh, six or eight months ago, something like that. Looking back, it's almost like a fever dream that I even did it. Right. Because he died. I was really depressed. It, it, it threw me more than I thought because he was a constant presence of support. And right. I didn't realize what an important beam he was in everything. And, and, uh, and I thought, I think there's just a lesson that he wants to teach everybody. And I'll tell you a story that it kind of launched the documentary is that I went to Gary's cremation. And so Gary's cremation was Jesus very... Christ. I mean, people don't go to cremations. You're not supposed to go yeah. to cremation. No, wait, you saw him like sliding the body in? <laughs> well, kind of. It's Jesus, Judd. Basically, you know... <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> basically... Uh, How did you get tickets to that? <laughs> I mean, and I only tell this... <laughs> I only tell this story because I think it's... It, it, it's helpful to people in their own lives is that, you know, a friend put together a very small service. So if you can imagine, there's only like eight people there and, you know, and an oven (laughs) basically. And, and like four uh, Buddhist monks, right? So that takes the edge off a little bit. They're like, they're here. They're not freaking out. Yeah. they, They were fine with it. That's their whole religion. Okay. So we go to this place and it's in the Valley and it's not that far from these offices. And it's, you know, a, a, a crematorium. Is it part of a strip mall? There's like ramen noodles, get it, your tax done, watch it, your, your friend get burned? Even worse. Right. It's deeper in the valley where it's just next to a place that like, you know, makes glass bowls or something. It's oh, in an industrial area. So we go there. It's clear no one's ever had a service in this space. This isn't what people do. Right. So there's no like room to do it. We're literally in like the lobby of a place that looks like a sham business of some, some place, right? And like what they're selling in the lobby, there's literally just like one desk and empty space. And did you make sure it was Gary underneath the sheet? <laughs> exactly. Like a fucking we should have crash looked. test dummy. Like, That'll be 50 grand. <laughs> like what they were selling there. They had these little, uh, they had these little pamphlets where you could take some of the ashes of your beloved and have them put into like, a little glass figurine you could put on your table or like something you would wear. Oh God, let it go. It's over. They're gone. They're gone. So we go, we go to this, this place and uh, we go into this little room. And again, it's like, it couldn't be rattier really. And they, they have a, a service, uh, which is very sweet and, and, and it's beautiful and, and, and moving and all of the ideas of, of Buddhism and the, and uh, and then they take us in this room. Now the room with the crematorium, it's like the kitchen to a restaurant. It's just like a big room with a cement floor and like four or five so did ovens. They, they did a little service. They hit some little fucking gongs it, or something. Like what happened? Yeah, they just they did Buddhist prayers and they talked about Gary's life and uh, and and what life is about. You, you know, you you know, you live, you die, you. You learn the lessons that you can. You try to be as loving and kind as you can. Hopefully, you uh, you know you grew, and it was very sweet. That actually sounds cool. Now, do they believe in a heaven and hell, Buddhist people? 
here's my issue with, with Buddhism is that you get deeper and deeper into it. It heads to reincarnation, I, I believe. And I always get lost when things get too magical. I like something that's clear, like life is about being kind. And that's it. Like that's that's as far as I usually can get. I can't. That's the script writer in you. Like, exactly. you. You need it to land. I need it to land. <laughs> as soon as it becomes magical in any way, as soon as someone's reborn or goes to heaven or hell, I'm I'm lost. I have trouble. Now I'm not 100 percent closed, but I'm pretty close. Uh, but I do. I can get interested in ideas that are about how can we, you know, let go of our egos and be kind. That, that's all I need. Okay. So we have the service, and it's and it's. So they bring you into the other it's room, moving, and then we go in the other room, and it's literally you know a table with a, a cardboard coffin, and then they say some more prayers, and then at some point they open up an oven, which looks like almost like a dishwasher in a restaurant, and they roll it. Are into the flames the, already going, or do they turn it on after they close the door? There's a pilot light, and. Uh, <laughs> And then, and then is it they, a Viking stove? Or like, what do they stick you? It's, it's literally not that far from a pizza oven. Okay. Okay. And you know they put uh, the cardboard coffin in, and they close close it almost like if a dishwasher in a restaurant. And then they ask who wants to push the button. Oh Jesus! And you know they're saying, do they have a bunch of fake buttons like a firing squad? Like somebody gets exactly. blanks and one guy really blows his brains out. Yeah, no one wants to know who, who pushed yeah. the button. You don't want to carry that. And then a friend of Gary's, you know, pushed the button. And then Fuck. suddenly it, you, you hear it fire up. You know, it's getting hotter than your normal pizza oven, and the room gets hot. And then. It's like you smell something burning. Like it's like, you know, if there was like a fire at your neighbor's house and suddenly like your chest hurts a little bit, then you realize it's Gary. But there's, ga- no, there's no vent? I guess I guess I, it maybe was a place that needed more ventilation. <laughs> no, I mean, there is a vent. It's not like overpowering, like the room is all filled with smoke. But you- So do you realize like someday if you go on a fast... To get rid of toxins in your body, part of that is Gary Shandling. Exactly, and that would sadden me. But but that's what was crazy about it. So now like, I love Gary so much, <laughs> I will never go on a fast after I breathed it. Wow! And so so I'm you know watching this, crying my eyes out, just bawling. It's as intense as anything I've ever experienced. Yeah, yeah this is pretty heavy, and I'm feeling it in my chest, and I'm aware like that's Gary. We're breathing in Gary. And at first, it, you know, part of me, it made me laugh. Like, yeah, because this is super creepy, dude. You know, it's, it's creepy. It's kind of weirdly, uh, like, like Gary always would make the joke, like, I'm inside you. You know, like there's like right. a sexual joke to be made there. Right. And then I just thought, God, Gary would find this so funny. All of us sitting here crying, watching them cremate his yeah. body. He would think that this was fantastic. Like me here bawling my eyes out, <laughs> Gary would look and just go like, that's right. That's what it is. That's what it is. And, and I thought in that moment, this is a lesson. Like having to look at that will change your life. Having to be at the crematorium about, you know, what's important? What do we care about? How do we treat people? What do you want to do with your life? And I thought Gary wanted me here. He wanted me to go through this hell in this freaking you know, oh, is this part of his, like... No, he didn't ask for it, but I just, oh. on like a spiritual level, I thought, this is it. Gary wants me to learn every freaking lesson to the point of his incineration. He wants me to look it in the eye and take from it whatever I can take to be a better person. And I think in that moment was, you know, the seed of how do I tell other people this lesson? Because I think in, in Gary's life, he was trying to figure out how to talk about this stuff. And, you know, it's very hard in comedy to do it without seeming really corny or weird. Right. You know, as soon as people start talking about their spirituality in a sincere way, we're all like, shut the fuck up. And it feels you got to be like strange. Getting interviewed by Oprah and she has to bring it out of you and act like, well, she asked me. Exactly. That's the only way to that's the only cool way to do it. I mean, and I have so many friends that tried to and they always seemed odd. And I think Gary, when he did Comedians in Cars uh, Getting Coffee, was the first time he found a way to be really funny but talk about some things that he believed in. And I think that was his goal near the end of his life. He was trying to figure out how 
to reinvent how he did stand up and get some of these ideas in. And he hadn't quite cracked it. He was really into silence. He loved not getting a laugh. He loved putting people through weird silences. Yeah. And he would say to the crowd, that that's where it all is. It's all in that silence, right? And he didn't have a joke. He didn't even know what to do with it. He just knew when the room went dead. Contemplating it, is what they're doing. They're contemplating yeah. what was just said. And so when I was uh, working on his memorial service, I cut together four or five little mini docs about Gary. And when I was making them, I thought, oh, yeah, there's a whole movie about Gary, about what he believed in. And, and that's how it started. 